Thanks very much for coming. Nice one, Chair. Thank you very much. So, yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting uh, the South East um, region along to give a demonstration on the recent activity that we, uh, that we did over the summer, um, which was the, the Housing Crisis Roadshow. Um, my name's Joe Dukes, and I um, support Kelly, the regional coordinator in the South East, and the members um, there as, as a mi administration support, um, and also get involved with campaigning and stuff like that. Um, but what I want to do today is just run through, um, run through really what we did and the process about how we decided what we were going to do and all that sort of thing. So, um, this first picture is of a, a poster that um, one of our supporters, Emma, 10 year old girl, um, drew for us um, on, the, on the, the, um, the Housing Crisis Roadshow. We thought that was a cracking way to get started. It's showing that you know that you know we try and get everyone included in what we what we're up to. Um, we met in uh, Eastern Place in in Surrey to do a branch officer training course, um, where we got all of our key activists like yourself along together to um, to do some training. And um, during that, one of the things that we did was reviewed the National Day of Action on benefit sanctions which you would all be very familiar with. Um, the overwhelming feedback from our members was that it was a really good initiative and that um, you know, we had lots of events across the region and they, um, they appreciated that sort of, um, that the national um, coordination of that and the, the materials that came out with it and the fact that there was a date set and you know, that everyone could get behind. Um, so through that there was a discussion about, you know, um, about effective campaigning and one of the ideas that came out of there was maybe we want to do a regional day of action, um, similar to, you know, the national day, but we'll do something for the South East. Um, so we started developing those ideas, um, we put a time frame on it, so we thought about six months after the national day of action, so we were able to um, go through it and come up with some ideas. Of course, there was lots of things that people want to campaign on, lots of you know um, issues which people are passionate about. So it'd be quite controversial how we would go about deciding what we would campaign on because we wanted the members to take control of this and to, um, you know for it to come from the members. So we decided to have a vote, um, and these were the categories um, which our members came up with. There was housing. The four demands, which uh, the People's Assembly were campaigning on heavily at the time. Um, there was a strap line, so one of our members um, had an idea about coming up with a, a strap line and camp campaign around that. Refugees, families, trade union values, NHS and health bus passes, public transport, disabilities, no decision until the next forum was another option. Top of the bill, as you can see, got 13 votes. Uh, on housing, so that was how the uh, that was how the theme of the day was decided. So we were set. We had um, we had a, a theme. We came up with the name of Housing Crisis Roadshow. We had a date, Saturday the first of October. We set up a steering group committee, people that wanted to help organise this, and we met up in uh, several occasions in Holborn, um, where we were talking about. Um, how this would be most effective. So we talked about social media strategy, we talked about building a campaign, just having a one-off day of action didn't seem to be sufficient. We wanted to get people behind this. So the idea of having a string of events leading up to the day of actions, having a roadshow where we went across the region came out of that steering group committee. And there we were, we were, um, we, we were Good to go, as you, as you like. There's me and Kelly in Oxford, I think we are there. Um, we've, um, we got behind the idea of, we wanted to know what are we asking for, what are our demands here? And we got behind the campaign of Acts the Housing Act, because there was a, the Housing Act legislation, which, um, which you might know about, uh, which is coming into force um, early next year. Some really nasty bits of legislation in there, and the Acts the Housing Act campaign had already done some great work and we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. 
So we, uh, we were linking in with the work that they'd already done. Uh, this is the, the key measures of the Housing Act 2016. And, uh, um, so it's extending the right to buy. And um, in, a, in a nutshell, pay-to-stay policies, in a nutshell, it favours private landlords and, and it undermines um, um, tenants' rights, you know, and, and it's, um, it's, it's not going to be good. You know, it's going to make the housing crisis that we face um, even more acute. So our campaign and objectives were to raise awareness around the multitude of housing issues our communities are facing, drawing particular attention to the fact that successive governmental failures had caused the crisis and that responsible, um, responsible governmental policy could mend the situation. In other words, um, it's the government's fault. If they wanted to get us out of this, they could do. Um, and they, you know, one of, the, one of the key ways would be to um, stop selling social housing and reinvesting in um, council housing, things like that. So this was a, a political choice. So we wanted to um, you know, encourage people to have a, a political awakening. Um, the second key objective, of course, in everything we do, is to promote the aims and values of the Unite, and with a targeted objective to raise the profile of the community sector and recruitment. So we wanted to get our name out there. We wanted to put Unite Community even firmly on the map, you know, and make sure that we were out there making a difference within the communities, talking to people about what's important to them. So we got, um, we got together a load of materials um, and bits and bobs, got ourselves prepared for these um, uh, roadshow events. You know, we've got loads of fantastic literature, stickers, flyers, posters and whatnot available, you know. Um, so if you ever did want to do any housing campaign, it's there, you know, and it's good stuff. So we did 17 roadshows. Um, in when I did this PowerPoint, it's 18 now, isn't it? Or, yeah. yeah, maybe a couple more. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So we we uh, we really hit the street. Six weeks period over the summer. Um, Kelly and I were out there, busy working on our towns um, and and, and in, engaging with um, you know with the um, wider communities in Brighton, Hastings, Portsmouth, Slough, Ramsgate, Crawley, Isle of Wight. Gillingham, Oxford, Reading, Bracknell, Worthing, Milton Keynes, Bitton, Dover, Eastleigh, Portsmouth and Southampton. So we really got out and about. And all of this was building towards the regional day of action on, on Saturday the 1st of October. So I had my wheelbarrow of revolution <laughs> where I'd take the board along at the back of the van and uh, carry all this... Uh, carry a pasting table and the literature and the bits and bobs along to these events. We would set up, we would meet our members and then it was just about going up to people in the street and asking them what their housing concerns were and listening to them. It was a really key part of what we were doing, you know, giving them an opportunity to tell us what their housing concerns were. And then we've got the, um, the board here, so we would ask, um, ask people to take five golden beans out of there and they could vote as they choose um, on the board um, any of those categories um, that they wanted. Um, tactical voting was allowed uh, and they could do what they want. Um, and then at the end of each road show we would count up the beans uh, to get an idea about you know, the, what the main concerns were and um, how, how that might or might not change in different regions um, but the overwhelming consensus was is that there was agreement there is a housing crisis not one person came back to us and said you know what housing crisis you know there isn't a problem some people might say oh I'm, I'm all right I've got a I've got a mortgage I've got a house and then you'd get deeper in conversation and they might still have um, they might still have you know um, children living at home in their in their thirties who aren't able to afford to move on and go out, and you know whether it's direct or not, we're all affected by this housing crisis, and that message was loud and clear. Um, so we've got a bean count table here, um, each of the categories um, listed, and each of the um, places that we went along to. 
and the highest um, overall category was the top one was unaffordable housing. It's just too too expensive for people, and then relatively closely behind that is a supply shortage. So we, you know, there, there's uh, you know people know what the problem is. We need to be building more houses, and this needs to be affordable housing. And our idea of affordable housing and the Tories' idea of affordable housing are not on the same page. You know, we, we, we need, um, um, you know, this, we, we can resolve these issues. So, um, so, yeah, we had our regional day of actions and um, we encouraged each branch. Um, we didn't have one event in the end. We encouraged our branches to put on their own uh, their own events, and they were very creative with what they were able to put on. So, in Portsmouth, they built a big house made out of cardboard boxes, and they were handing out um, handing out goodies to um, people walking by. There was um, poetry, song, and street theatre in Southampton. Um, some areas just had a pasting table and you know and talked to people and handed out leaflets and that was great you know but there was a significant number of events on Saturday the first of October despite the howling rain and appalling weather on the day it still happened and it was um, some good stuff going on. So we we thought about after the regional day of action we don't want to just. We don't want to just let this thing, you know, lie, you know, lie dead and, and leave it there. Uh, we wanted a follow-up action, so um, we encouraged our members to to go along to the, the Housing Act Summit on the 22nd of October. Which, if you didn't attend it, you probably almost certainly saw it advertised. It was a, a big national event um, in central London um, and um, very well attended. And we were able to have um, a South East Unite community stall there where, um, where there was a presentation as we're doing today on the housing roadshow. And we were able to share our experience um, with how it went and talk to people about, about communicating the message and getting that feedback from the wider community. That's it, isn't it? And, uh, um, so, so yeah, that's the end of the, the, the PowerPoint. It, the, it's, it's really worth pointing out that we did get a significant win out of this in that the Tories have recently backtracked on one of the key parts of the, um, uh, the, the, housing, the housing Act on, on the, the right to um, the pay, pay the stay, pay the stay yeah, yeah. Where, where, they, where they scrapped it. And that's a big victory, you know, and that's down to, you know, that's put down to people like us who go out there, you know, week in, week out and campaign on these issues, you know. So, you know, it's really important to, um, to recognise that, you know, when we go out and do events like this, it's making a difference. It's really changing our communities and, and it doesn't always feel like that, but it does, you know. Um, I think that's pretty much it for, for me, but if there was any questions or anything, I'm happy to answer them. Brilliant. What are you doing with the, what, what are you going to do with the data that you've collected? I mean, more that you've shown the table, are you, are you planning to do anything else with it? Or? Yeah, so we, um, like, uh, like I can see you've got here today, you get a regional newsletter where you'll communicate that um, information with your members. We we do we do the same we do the same but it was also taking it along to um, to the other events and talking about you know being able to talk about comparisons with your neighbour that actually you're not isolated you know with this problem that homelessness is you know is is in each of the major towns and cities across the country and you can feel sometimes as if you know this is a really local problem whereas actually it's affecting everybody. So it, we used it to sort of share that share that message and help communicate what we were doing. And what did people say about rough sleep? I notice it's not on your list there, but um, you know, from, from from my own from my own eyes, I can I can see that it's increasing, and you know, we know from the data it's increasing. What did the people who you talked to say about it? There was there was absolutely a um, you know, as you've just said, you know, people are aware that it's on the rise. 
and that it's, um, it's, it's a massive problem um, within our communities and that we're, um, we're neglecting some of the most vulnerable people in society, you know, allowing that to happen. Um, and that we should, we can, and we should be doing more about it. Um, can, I, can I jump in there as well? I mean, the supply shortage kind of was the area mm. where people were talking about homelessness in the mm. houses. So that, that was very much the, the where people, when they were talking about homelessness, chose to put one, two, or three, or all their beans. Um, we um, we um, even had um, one young person came in and, and, and was very much like, that's where all my beans are going for the homeless people. Yeah. Um, we were um, also interacting with a lot of people who were rough sleepers or homeless or staying at friends' houses or um, currently without a fixed address. Um, we engaged with a number of people and they were really, really um, happy to see that somebody was out there campaigning for them for their needs. And, mm. and we've also got now links um, on, on, through this we've made links for a number of people who are involved in local homelessness campaigns who are on the media, who are getting the message out there. We, we've got one of our new members who joined on the back of coming along to our event, he'd heard about, um, has actually been on, on um, quite a lot of national media. I think he was on a Radio 4 programme recently and has also got on local media in Milton Keynes, where you might have heard a number of rough sleepers have, have actually passed away this year. Yeah. Um, and, and he's done a few sleep outs as well. Um, so we've got some really tight links with local um, campaigning groups in a number of areas um, where we're kind of helping support on the ground but also raising awareness through local media as well. Can I, can I ask? Yeah, of course. Um, two questions. Um, I'm going to assume that no one bothered to do this if they had no concern. So but I, I was surprised at the, the number of beans that were in the other notes. So, so I was interested in what the other concerns were. But what I'd really like to know is, um, from an organisational point of view, uh, uh, what was your biggest difficulty, do you think? Well, um, they all just a piece of cake. I mean, I don't know. The, um, organisationally, I suppose it was, um, it, it, took, um, it took a lot of coordination from Kelly and myself to, to, get, um, to get it to, uh, together in the first place. Um, and then get the, uh, you know, to get the materials to the events and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But once, really, I mean, logistically, that was the, the biggest problem, if you want to call it a problem. But um, we were able to, to sort of manage that. I think I, I, I'd, yeah. I'd go on to say um, maybe the weather was a challenge on occasion. Um, but we had the regional gazebo in the back of the van just in mm. case it was going to be a bad day. So a couple of events we actually had to have a gazebo to shelter from the rain or the sun. <laughs> we're actually, yeah. on a, a lot of the days, the weather was actually the, the heat. Yeah. So we were looking for areas where we'd kind of sourced where we were going to pitch up. And we had to move slightly to be in the shade. And so the weather, weather was, was um, yeah, certainly um, um, quite intense, even whether it be downpours or rain or, but it, it certainly didn't dampen or, 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 or it wasn't a problem for the event. In terms of the other no concern, and um, that tended to be from the ones the people that I engaged with was where they specifically wanted to vote on the bedroom tax, for example. Right. Now mm -hmm. the bedroom tax, I would say, is a part of the Housing Act. It's yeah. a part. Of, so, so like ha homelessness is a part of there not being enough supply shortage. Obviously, with the list is endless, but they all kind of link in. So a lot of people were like, well, I actually want it specifically to be that other thing, and um, we certainly um, didn't have anyone that said. I don't have any concern. No, no concern. Apart from one person who um, is an interesting and quite amusing story in, in Milton Keynes again, actually, um, a Tory councillor was passing by on our lunch break. We were outside the office, council offices, the leader of the Tory council um, there. And um, she said, um, Oh, five golden beans. Well, yeah, supply shortage, of course, so living up, building up houses, of course, of course she'd want to have a political um, bashing in, in, in the event. She said, um, social housing self, well, that's a good thing, isn't it? It's a very good thing for the people with chance to buy their properties. But so how many people still own their properties that were sold off in the 1980s, and how many are owned by private landlords? And then she's like, well, it's still a good thing, it's giving people a chance. 
exploitative landlords. Well, I'm a landlady. Why well, not exploitative? It's like, but you do recognise that some very much yeah. are charging huge extortionate rents. And, and so she was really struggling with this was the only person that I engaged with that struggled. And then she went, the Housing Act. Okay. Don't really know much about the Housing What's Act. That? <laughs> what, what, what parts of the Housing Act are a problem then? Yeah. Seriously, this person yeah. was the leader of the Tory Council. And we, we then gave her materials on the Housing Act to go away and inform herself what the Act contained and whether or not she'd find it something mm. that was acceptable or mm. not. Um, but yeah, that, that was um, certainly the only person that I found that struggled to find enough places to put their things. Most people were like, I want to, I, I, I want more in every, in, yeah. in every area. Yeah. Thank um, you. I Sorry. just, um, I live in Gloucester where there's, um, uh, recently oh, there's well. been a situation where um, almost a whole street of tenants in bedsits have been told to, mm -hmm. they've got to move out by the 6th of January. It's all like, the, all the properties are owned by the same, were owned by the same landlord. Um, and um, it turns out that this landlord has sold the properties to a company called Henley Health, which is a big multinational company with a billionaire owner. Um, and the, um, the story goes that Henley Health are going to convert these properties into uh, homes for the vulnerable. Um, which, uh, disregarding the fact that all of these people who have been made homeless right before Christmas are now vulnerable themselves. Mm. But, um, and I've also heard that a similar thing has happened in Peterborough where a company have um, bought up a load of properties to, com to make them into homes for the homeless, which is even more uh, ludicrous. And I, I just wondered if that was, if you, if you had people talking to you about that, those sorts of situations where um, like a, a, a whole street or a state or whatever is being sold off um, for similar reasons because I'm yet to discover um, how Henley Health have managed to do this, whether they've got some sort of behind the scenes um, deal with the council or what the, what the situation is exactly. There seems to be something that's happening in various places. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had we had lot various you know stories you know coming from members of the public. I know in Kent in in particular, they, one of the main problems for them were um, the social cleansing exercise from central London, where they're pushing people out of um, social housing in central London and then trying to rehome um, people in in. Uh, in Kent, um, in different areas in Kent, and um, the the pressures that that's putting on communities and and services because they're not putting in the the infrastructure um, to to manage that, um, and then you you know and then these people don't want to leave either, and then there's uh, the social isolation that that's causing, you know, where they're being taken away from their friends and families and and moved out. Um, we we heard a lot of um, we heard a lot of stories like that, um, but generally with um, exploitative landlords, that's you know what we're talking about here. They they just you know trying to maximise profit in whatever way they do, and they don't care. You know they they see this as a, a profit making exercise, not as you know people's homes. You know where people need to you know what people need, you know, safety and shelter. Um, so yeah, we heard, we heard lots of similar stories, um, yeah. I've Did not heard of that organisation... Henley Health. Henley Health. I wonder if Henley... I wonder if it's anything to do with the area, Henley, like I said. Um, Henley Health. Oh, Henley on Thames is in our region, yeah. um, but I've, I've not heard of Henley Health. I'm not sure about that. I I've think heard. they're based offshore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the rugby fans are an obnoxious bunch. Brett, you had a question. Um, yes, I know we run a campaign in Swindle, we're part of a campaign running in Swindle called Swindle Now as an Action Campaign. And uh, one of the things that's going on in Swindon is there's a move to criminalise rough sweepers. That's right. Um, and I know that other 
local authorities are watching this very, very closely. Now, um, are you seeing anything like that in the South East? Or uh, are we alone here in the South West? PSPO is probably through, that's probably what's causing the criminalisation, that's what they, the short term yeah. for it. No, we, we are seeing things like that. I mean, in, in um, um, I know, I, I know that they, they're trying to, areas where um, rough sleepers are using, they're putting up um, stereo systems and playing mm. high frequency music. Yeah. That's um, in Bournemouth bus station. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and put, laying spikes down on, on yeah, sheltered yeah. areas where people can sleep. Yeah, that's um, making buskers have to have a permit or criminalising them if you, know, you want to try and uh, do some busking. Things like that. So the the pressure um, the pressure being put on homeless people is immense, you know. Um, and I think it's across the board. Um, and I think you know a lot of um, a, a lot of local authorities. Um, it's, it's a problem that they they don't want. So if they can put on apply the pressure and get them to move on to the next town or city, they're quite happy with that. But in my opinion, that's appalling. I mean, I think we've seen also, you know, we've seen the, the actions of Nottingham City Council, which is actually disgusting. They've just brought a new poster um, campaign. Yeah, in terms of begging, um, absolutely disgusting campaign from a, a Labour authority. So. They've just turned that, they've turned that, uh, Nottingham um, City Council were, 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 were criticised very much for their poster campaign earlier in the year, which highlighted. Um, the individual uh, rough sleeper and their habits, yes. you know. Um, but they've just brought out a new poster campaign, which is trying to bring, which is sort of turned that on its head. After they've, they've taken on board the criticism, oh, and now they've they brought out a new one, which is all about giving people sleeping bags and and and, and supporting supporting rough sleepers. Mm. So I completely agree with what you say. They do deserve a lot of criticism. But we also have to recognise that they've listened yeah. to the criticism. For those who don't know, the Nottingham City Council campaign was a poster campaign which called on people not to give money to, to rough sleepers and beggars um, and actively uh, said in the poster campaign that they will probably spend it on drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I would. Well, I, I spoke to someone I had a volunteer with and he said he, got, he went to a talk by the police and the police sort of basically say don't give them money. For those reasons, mm -hmm. the, police are, the police are the people that are really pushing that line, um, and they're doing it all over the country. I just wanted to say that in Tor Bay, uh, the mayor there is trying to um, criminalise rough sleepers for using their beach. That's and that's and he's trying to do that through a PSPO order. Um, um, sorry, Mick, you wanted to speak, it, and then it, it was just um, a, a comment about the the Swindon thing with homeless people. We talked earlier about whether it was right or wrong, that the uh, soup kitchen, but only for uh, uh, white yeah. English uh, uh, people. But there's a serious allegation in Swindon about um, uh, police uh, um, cooperation with the local council um, as regards this and what actually happens. Um, basically, when you work out how many rough sleepers you've got, like someone goes around and counts them. I mean, it's that simple. So uh, the council say to the police, we'll be going around Wednesday night or whenever it is, and the police go around on Tuesday night and arrest them and bang them up. They arrest them for boat trip, they bang them up. The guy goes around, has a good count. Aren't we good? We haven't got any rough sleepers. So all, this, all you left is up making this fuss about them. You don't know what you're talking about. There aren't any. No, they're all banged up overnight. And, um, and another technique that which and is that used, needs to be addressed, doesn't it? Another technique which they use is to confiscate their sleeping bags yeah. and 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 their, and their whatever it is that they have, um, which which takes them off the street for a couple of nights and then they come back, or takes them away from the visual, the visual um, areas. Well, the but point, it, in actual fact, if, if you look at the law, um, it actually doesn't count people who are sleeping if they are if they are sat upright. Um, you can only be counted as a rough sleeper if you are lying on your back asleep. That is actually in the in the legislation. But the police should um, not be helping the council to no. disguise 
But the police have done that all over the country. In, that's in terms of the Wiltshire Police, I think they'll be better off looking for councillors and not paying for their, their council mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. well, that's right, a yeah. Conservative councillor. But, but that's a serious allegation uh, made in Swindon about the police. Yeah, Zaria sorry. had something. Yeah, well, like most places, we've got issues with uh, student housing in that um, Bristol. Mm. The problem that we are finding more of, and it's not against the students in any way, shape or form, because that's, you know, well, you know that is another subject. But the how, how is it? We're, we're finding out that the, um, the people who are buying up the land or the buildings to then make into student housing are going about it in a different way. So the effect is is that they can count that as social housing mm. allotment, but it's not social housing because it's for students. Um, and the fact that you know students go away for the summer and then our local housing association is renting them out and making a fair bit of money. Have you come up against this? And is there anything I can take that I'm part of a housing hub in, in, in Bath that we're trying to address a lot of these issues? Um, the fact that they can buy up land or buildings. It's just, it's just so vast, isn't it? There's just yeah. so many things. I mean, I haven't heard anything specifically about that on the lecture, but I'm we sure there's much of it going on everywhere. Okay. Uh, David, David, sorry. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I wanted to know, given the Brexit thing particularly, was there much, uh, bl much blame, I suppose, on immigrants for the housing crisis in the South East? I know a lot of... Uh, People I know in the you know, yeah. South East Kent, sort of big issue with immigrants, and there's been a lot of uh, clashes in Dover recently. Yeah, it, it came up, um, it, it did come up, and we were really mindful when we were, um, it, when we were planning the, the event that we wanted this to be an opportunity for people mm -hmm. to tell us what their housing concerns were. So we had to be quite um, prepared and, and well disciplined not to um, engage in, in too in a depth conversations about, uh, about um, some individuals' views on, on immigration and, um, and how they might um, see it problematic. Um, but it was there, you know, um, we, we, we did get that. Um, I think if you, if you start... Um, challenging it um, at that opportunity then 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 you um, you can lose a lot of uh, a lot of the opportunities that are created around having a conversation like this with if that makes sense that's got, that's um, cost, I mean leading on from that what it, what it did do was open up an opportunity mm. to talk to people who mm. perhaps post their views yeah. for whatever reason um, often just because they've been misinformed by the paper that they read or somebody else who's had a conversation to have, have a further engagement about the, whose fault it actually is that there's a supply shortage and mm. that housing is unaffordable it, it, and that it isn't immigrants or refugees it's not their fault that there's a, a supply shortage and so it, it actually gave us a platform to talk to people that we perhaps wouldn't always have the opportunity to do if we were doing a more direct kind of left wing um, stall on something that, that would gem generally do a stall. And like, so, so people that would hurl abuse at us normally as they pass stopped and engaged. And then we had that opportunity to talk a little bit longer. So like Joe said, we did have to be very disciplined in how we responded. And it wasn't an argument. It was actually about um, changing that kind of approach as to who, who do you think is to blame for this? Do, do you think that the government could actually change their policy and build more housing and actually offer a safe place for it? So, so it, re it really gave us, a, a, I think, a, 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 an opportunity to, to speak on a much, much wider level than we have on, on many other campaigns. I was going to put my hand up, but I was on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I've, no I've learned recently, um, just talking about immig immigrants and who are rough sleepers, um, Unfortunately, homeless charities now are working with the immigration authorities to actually um, remove these people back to their own country, and and then they're they're, they're then claiming that as a as a, su a successful um, result in, t in terms of helping that person. 
but of course there's no there's we we don't know over here what happens when they when they're actually dropped off back in their own country you know are they supported because these people still have needs which and, and some of them quite acute needs um, so, so so some mungos is it some mungos um, they're one of the Thames Reach um, in Nottingham there's a there's I forgot what the charity is called but they're doing it as well Manchester Liverpool all the big cities now are just, these people are just being picked up and taken and taken back to wherever they come from, you know, Poland, wherever. Sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, that's right what you're saying. I mean, we certainly saw it with, um, you know, um, waiting lists for um, housing waiting lists where you have to have a, a local affiliation to an area. I mean, there were some areas that we visited, Isle of Wight in particular, where I think that the waiting list for social housing was six years, um, six years waiting list for um, social housing. And then you had to have a, um, you know, connection to the connection, area for yeah. even longer. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's about pushing, um, you know, moving the problem away. It's a technique of moving the problem away to another area. Um, and it doesn't surprise me that they're using this um, internationally as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and the number of council houses on the Isle of Wight is a big fat zero. There isn't any. They're all housing associations and other organisations in the area. One, one of the things that um, the bedroom tax, one of the, the, the what well, I call it a perversion of the bedroom tax, is that um, you know, people are not wanting to occupy larger social housing, so three bed, four bed, because they're worried about, you know, they, maybe they're in insecure work at the time and, they do, and they're worried that in the future they, they won't be able to afford that house. So what's actually happening is... Um, these houses are going to the least, the people who least need them, and those pe people are generally people who come from abroad. So, and, and of course, people seeing this say they're filling up our council council houses when in fact it's actually the bedroom tax and our own local uh, regional mm -hmm. laws which is preventing those houses being filled by people who um, who live locally. One of my preferred responses when when you'd ask someone, "Hello, what's your you know? Do you have any housing concerns? What are your housing concerns?" and they hit back straight at you, "Immigration, mate." You know, it would be like, "Okay, um, so 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 you know if so, like, you, I accept you think that. Um, did you know that we would still have an housing crisis even if we had no immigration whatsoever? You know, there would still be a housing crisis going mm -hmm. on." And then, you know, so, so in that case, what would be your, your highest concern? That sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, there's these, you, you know, there's these beliefs out there that, um, mm -hmm. that, that the housing crisis is caused by other people, you know, the, the other and mm -hmm. immigrants and this, that and the other. But the real problem here and the, the main message, our key objective of this campaign was to make people aware that this is a political choice. And actually, in the, in the you know in in the world that we live in out there today, it's the Tory government that's at fault here. They can they can um, change this. You yeah. know. Well, can I just say thank you very much for coming today, mm -hmm. both of you. Um, it's really good to see what you're doing, um, and it's I think this is a sort of campaign that we, you can actually transfer to other other things, you know. So, and, and but to see how relatively simple it is. You know, with a board there, which hopefully most of us can make uh, with a little bit of effort, um, that we can do, and, and we can, um, you know, we've been talking um, about doing transport, public transport campaign, and I think actually using that idea to put on to, to suggest different things to people it would be fantastic. But also to maybe continue what you're doing in, mm. in the southwest. I mean, we, we obviously have the social media element to this. You saw all the power. Well, I was sharing it online as well. So we have a South West United Community Housing Crisis Social Board for today. Um, and we obviously have um, the Golden Beans. And we should and we all have some boards. If people want to actually have a photograph taken and have a vote in the thing, it's, it's quite, is there a time to do that on your agenda? We have got six minutes left. So in that time, should we all take a, have a photo taken? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of us doing the act of 
Does it look like people want to write on the table? Right what, 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 what did you do with all the anecdotes that you wrote? From all, uh, did you? We created all the collages together and built them all yeah. and then posted them all through yeah, social media, stuff, shared it? with local media. Yeah, um, has anyone got anything they want to write for a, for a, photo, for a big group photo? If we're going to do just one. Any, anyone else? Anyone want to? Mm. So we're looking right. for a housing, housing mm. concern. Do you want to write one? Well, we desperately need more social housing, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Thinking if we're going to have one group photo, uh, we can have... This in, in it, and then a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to have a vote. Well, if I take a picture of the blue beans, if you like. I'm not Sarah. I can't smile because of me. Obviously, this is still working, so. I think you made it. I'll pick the next one, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that won't take long. <laughs> you're going to have to take these guys, you. Well, we actually, the hashtag was um, housing crisis. Let's have a look. And so make your own. I took about 20. What housing crisis? I'll pick the better ones. <coughs> Sure, we all do a joint one? And everyone who's comfortable to stand in front of the camera. Does somebody want to hold that? Yeah. I break cameras generally. <laughs> Shall I go and see if somebody can come in and take a picture so that Joe and I can join you guys? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll take a photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you. Don't I'll grab some. Should get a new like flag out as well. It's a not to, isn't it? We'll get over that end. Yeah, Brett's got to get some wood. So we'll. Um, I'll take a couple of just individual ones as well. We can send you a few, a few, um, a few um, local pictures. Joe's got your hands on me. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, there's this black Sorry. <coughs> you just want to share. Imagine you realise I'm supposed to share. Do you want to do it on your own? Do you want to do it on your own as well? Or? It's video. Oh, okay. I, can, I can take individual okay. shots from that. If I give you mine then. That's there we good. go. Yeah. That's just going to be like share that. Get in there then. Get over here, boys. Yeah, should me and Joe get. Yeah. Yeah. James okay. and James. <laughs> come yeah, yeah, yeah. come through the radar. Got me all breathing. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. Fantastic. Great, Jim. Another one. Just for luck. Yeah, I think that's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. I don't know what you're doing for that one. Hey, how are you? Okay, very useful. You can come again. Oh, nice, yeah. There were two survivors. Nice word, Shara. Um, Joe, um, I asked Joe if he could think of some way of interacting with young people at a STEM event. That's a science, technology, engineering, and maths for young people. Eight thousand young people visited. East Sussex Showground, and we got the opportunity to work with the TUC and put on a, 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 a stall to talk to the, the young people. And um, Joe very creatively came up with, with this, but it was Big Bang Politics. So what we did was we, we chatted to um, young people, up to 8,000 in a day, and it was packed for the whole day, giving them the chance to vote on issues that um, affected them. You can see how busy it is, how many people wanted to have the vote. <coughs> And um, we were then giving away um, little goodie bags inside the marquee as well. But the issues that we talked about there, so this can be adapted to whatever campaign it might be that you want. Um, they, they were like things like free education, um, votes at 16, um, not enough housing, um, affordable housing. So they were the, the, the board, I'm, I'm trying to look for one. Um, uh, it was campaigning for an NHS. Um, in fact, the NHS, I think, was a clear winner on that day as well, wasn't it? Young people yeah. being worried about their NHS, which was, which was really, um, really good to hear. We also had in there a bit of a, 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 bit of a bogus one, cut taxes. Because we were interested in how people might think that's a good thing to pay less tax. And how um, they might put their bean in there. Because this is all about 
it's not just about the outcomes, it's about the engagement and the conversation. So when young people are saying, oh yeah, we should pay less tax, we then have an opportunity to say, what do you think pays for our NHS and education? Do you think that big organisations should be avoiding their tax? Do you think that people should pay less so that then we've got less to actually pay for a public service? And so it gave us a real chance to, to chat to young people. So yeah, build more housing, invest in the NHS, cut taxes, free education votes at 16. This can be adapted in any way you want, but, but that particular young person's event was very, very, very engaging. It was just packed for the whole day. So I just thought I'd just share that. I remembered I had the pictures on Absolutely, my slide. Yeah, so yeah. But uh, uh, thanks to Joe, I mean, this, 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 this kind of idea has to come from somewhere. It's about how do we engage a little bit differently. And I know the South West have been leaders in creatively campaigning. And I've take, certainly taken inspiration from a lot of things that I've heard about with some of the, the, the rural bus campaigns and the street theatre for this. And so yeah, um, I think the United Community really does um, lead the way in, in getting out there and campaigning um, differently, engaging wide, more widely um, to, to members of the public that perhaps we wouldn't engage with with a, a, the usual rally or march or protest or event. Um, that is still very important and still have a place, but I think we, we, we do do things sometimes that a little bit differently that creates a little bit more interest. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.